In this Hubnut video from New Zealand, I'm unexpectedly driving a Fiat Bravo from 2001. So this beauty is the Fiat Bravo and uh, the number plates are clued to the spec, 155 brake horsepower. It is the HGT flagship model um, as reflected in this badge on the side. And um, you'll notice 20 valve. And it's not 20 valve like an Audi engine with five valves per cylinder. No, there are four valves per cylinder. So it's a five cylinder engine. This is the engine out of the Fiat Coupe. Uh, Fiat Coupe was based on the Fiat Tipo floor pan, which I think evolved into this platform under the Type 182, the Fiat Bravo and Brava. Uh, this is the Bravo, which is the three door. Uh, they actually made the three door and the five door very very different um, so for my money it's got to be bravo i wasn't keen on the brava which had um big slussy sort of rear lights uh, i think the bravo this view isn't the best um, thanks to the strong sunshine but um, very futuristic albeit for the futuristic for the um, 1990s but a very shapely car and looks beautifully italian which is amusing because it was actually styled by a German, Peter Fassbender, who was working for Fiat at the time. He also did the later Stilo. Um, but this was this was a high time for Fiat design overall, I think. Uh, you you got to remember this is the time of the um, Chris Bangle penned um, Fiat Coupe, uh, the uh, the little Barquetta, the pretty little drophead Coupe, uh, the deliciously quirky um, Fiat Multipla which effectively runs on a, an enlarged Bravo platform. I think these were definitely good times. And um, you, you can perhaps see a little Alfa Romeo 147 um, in the styling. I certainly can. Um, not, not the details of the front end, but the overall shape definitely makes me think of Alfa 147, which is hardly surprising. I'm sure they share a fair bit um, under the skin. Um, but yeah, def definitely one of Fiat's better efforts. I was never massively keen on the um, the tiny little headlamps at the front. Uh, you can see the actual detail of them is quite nice. Separate reflectors in there and the indicators on the side. Obviously we'll do some illumination for such items later on. Front fog lights on this being a premium model. And uh, if we head inside, things get a lot more premium. Well, the windows open because it's quite, quite hot today. Um, open the door i have to be a bit careful of the fence because that is a huge door but look at this lovely lever uh, which extends to the seats uh, so there's the tilt mechanism we've got height adjustment there's the rear and that's your adjust your um head restraints as well everything catered for if we hop aboard uh, there's a fair bit of extra clutter going on because we've got a phone holder here which is handy i've got my phone sitting in it right now i apologize for it getting in the way a nice stylish three spoke steering wheel um, black on white dials um, which uh, i can't tell how they illuminate because it's too light um, here are the column stalks which actually have quite a nice feel to them uh, wiper control over this side we have a mist function um, we've got this um, air conditioning which sadly doesn't work which is quite warm today uh, that would normally be folded up if it hadn't got electrical items in it but even this is quite nice design um not sure what that does maybe changes the units on the thermometer uh, we've got fog lights there heated rear window yeah uh, one of those horrible fake indicator noises i think not necessarily very keen on that this is the stereo uh, cassette player um so um that seems a little unnecessary to flap up like that. But this was a time in the mid 90s, very much of the um, built in stereo, extra fresh air ventilation there. Uh, moving up here, we've got um, uh, different lamps available. I don't quite understand. Is that meant to show? It looks like it's showing rain. It's slightly peculiar. And I uh, don't understand what that one's all about, really. Oh, door and permanently on, I see. Uh, tiny little switch which looks very very generic because it's been nicked out of all sorts for the um sunroof which i might well open because it's so um warm so it's got the 
tilt and um, I like the fact it goes down in jerks before presumably going all the way back which isn't a very popular thing to do in New Zealand because you just end up burning yourself silly so we, we shall put that back in the um, uplifted position with a bit of sunshade going on and the headliners going a bit baggy because New Zealand just cooks the glue um, turn the ignition back off again although we'll just have a look, quick look 256,000 kilometers not exactly in the first flush of youth but these things are very Ooh, the sunroof just shut that's interesting scared the absolute what's it out of me these seats are very very comfortable um uh, i must say and it, it surprisingly um it feels like a quality vehicle in here um i say surprisingly because it's a fiat fiat aren't usually known for build quality but no shakes or rattles as we go along and um it's all quite good really electronic headlamp leveling there um so that looks like the bonnet please down there is it or is it just a badge Are you just saying it's under there? Oh, yeah. Is that it there? That's strange. Oh, what, what's that about? Um, I don't think that released the bonnet. That's all a bit peculiar. I do like getting used to different cars. Ah, oh, there we go. That has done. It's job. I'm not sure it's meant to be quite so dangly, but you'll notice we've got somewhere to rest the clutch foot and three pedals in the conventional manner. Um, I will, just before we go and look at the bonnet, see if I can get in the back. Sit behind myself. Oh, that's good. An automatic mechanism that folds the whole thing away. He's got a sunscreen for when he's parked up. That's quite neat to have the seat belts all stacked up like that. You can hear the lever creaking as I um, sit down. Um, it really is. Oh yeah, um, head headliner on my head aside, uh, I think it would be a bit tight for headroom back here anyway, but it's otherwise spacious. I've got my own little armrest down here. There are pockets for storing first aid kits and whatnot. 60-40 uh, split rear seat, so that folds. Um, so yeah, it, it's the headroom is definitely tight, even if I push that up. Uh, my head is quite close to it, but um, yeah, not bad. Now there is no external release for the boot, but there is a separate flappy little thing down there. Or you could open it with a key, one assumes. And uh, yeah, that's not a bad boot. CD auto changer. And uh, yeah, fairly spacious. And like I said, the rear seats fold down. The lip isn't too high. Um, so you've still got to lug stuff in a bit, but it could be worse. But if you want practicality, you really go for the Marea. The Marea is the hatchback or saloon version of the Bravo and Brava. Actually a different type officially. Uh, so not on the 182, I think they're 183s. Um, and the estate has a split tailgate. So you get a completely flat load floor. Not a bad looking car, the old estates, as it happens. Uh, right, we're going to look at the um, engine, but we'll We'll say those door hinges have suffered enough for now, they can have a rest. Let's see if we can get under the bonnet here. The grill seems to come up with the bonnet. And there we go. And there we go. It's a big old lump, the Fiat five-cylinder engine. Um, doing the cam belt. Um, it can be done in situ. And there is the belt. But um, really, it's far easier if you remove the entire engine. Um, so yeah, one, two, three, four, five cylinders and um, a glorious noise is created as a result. Now, not many manufacturers have done five cylinder engines. Um, Audi and Volkswagen are the um, key ones, diesel and petrol. Mercedes-Benz have experimented, well actually put in production five cylinder diesel in the um, W123 and possibly the um, 115. Um, Honda oddly have done one five cylinder engine which they put in the um, Inspire and possibly the Vigor Japanese market only uh, Land Rover with a TD5 um, but generally yeah there aren't many five cylinder engines out there and uh, I like them because they make a lovely warbly noise as we shall discover fairly conventional in terms of suspension um, McPherson struts up here at the front uh, they're effective and they work I'll engage windscreen wipers uh, let's just turn that off 
moment. Oh, apparently you have to do your own wipers, I see. And uh, that's not good. There's a tiny little triangle of doom up there. That's um, an oversight on the part of Fiat. I don't think that's good enough for just this tiny little triangle just here that you can't see, but I can, believe me. Uh, it is there and it pains me. Now, I've been told the rear washer doesn't work, but maybe the rear wiper does. Yeah, that looks decent enough. Gives a pretty good wiping performance. Um, but um, let's uh, knock her in neutral and we'll give her a bit of this. So, so far, so ordinary, but... That's a very zingy um, five-cylinder engine. It's got a bit of a rasp to it, like many an Italian four-cylinder, but... Um, Yeah, that sounds nice. So we'll get you in the mount and go for a drive. Right, like I say, it's a toasty old day and we've got no air conditioning, so I'm gonna to have to leave the window open, which um, might lead to a bit more ambient noise, but hopefully um, we'll allow more engine noise in. particular example might be feeling its age a bit. It's very, very um, sluggish at lower revs and doesn't seem to have an awful lot of torque. But get it revving. And it really does pick up. Um, and um, just a really pleasant car to drive. It feels very refined and um, smooth. And it's uh, what the rev counter says, the engine always feels like it's doing fewer revs. Um, I'm not really sure why that is, I'm going to try and check the window for a bit. But like I say, the engine hasn't got an awful lot of torque, so you do have to kind of rev it a bit to get any progress out of it. It's a bit flat. But then, yeah, it does pick up. Sadly, only an 80 km an hour speed limit on this section of road. Um, curtailing my enjoyment a little, but it doesn't feel like a car that's begging you to absolutely thrash it. It's just a nice sounding car, but you can drive quickly and it handles well. So here is an opportunity to take in the rear styling, uh, delicious as it is of the Fiat Bravo. Lovely rear lamp clusters, um, the badges are starting to go a little blue around the edges. For my money, one of the most attractive three-door hatchbacks there has ever been. Uh, Peugeot 306, also a contender, but they replaced that with a 307, and um, that did not look so nice. But yeah, that is very, very pleasant styling, I should say. Oh, it's my favourite sign. So um, let's see what she can do. I mean, it is uphill, so this is a bit unfair, but we'll just get out. I'm just on a bit of gravel at the moment, onto the straight road, and. What you can do is sound glorious, even though that engine is definitely under par, it is bogging really badly. Um, maybe there's a sensor not quite giving its all. Oh, private road. We probably don't want to continue down the private road then. Oh, this is a nice car to drive.
car this is such a nice car this must be one of the most underrated cars of all time and um, if Hubner exists for anything it's for shining a light on vehicles such as this the um, cruelly overlooked you think about how many other um, sort of family hatchbacks in their sporty versions that get lauded beyond belief uh, but um, yeah five cylinder engine is where it's at baby So there you go, that was the really rather pleasant Fiat Bravo HGT. Um, yeah, I, um, it's hard not to get overly excited about the engine, it does sound magnificent, but um, as an overall package, a very surprising car, um, and uh, wrongly overlooked I think. I mean Fiat's are generally, because people still harbour this idea that Fiat's are rubbish. They emphatically are not, and this is a very very nice car, so I shall say. Thank you very much for watching, don't forget to subscribe before you go, and I shall see you in a future video. Farewell. One small correction, that is definitely an actual proper relay, you can kind of feel it in the steering wheel.